This is a fascinating case of a 46-year-old man with chest pain for a total of eight months. He's had significant dyspnea, particularly in the past two months. He self-referred himself for a screening heart scan and non-contrast CT of the chest because he was frustrated with respect to what was going on. Four months prior to the scan, he had a lung CT angiogram that apparently showed no evidence for pulmonary emboli. I reviewed the report and it showed no other commentaries. As you look at this individual as we come down slice by slice, you'll see a little bit of calcification anteriorly and in the aortic root. But as you get into the coronary arteries in particular, there is incredibly extensive calcification involving the left anterior descending, the left circumflex, and the right coronary artery. When you do the formal scoring on this individual, you're again uh, amazed at the amount of coronary artery calcification involving the left main and the left anterior descending coronary artery, now involving the left circumflex. and finally extending on down to the right coronary artery. This is an incredible amount of hardening of the arteries in the standard theoretical sense defined in a 46-year-old man. In fact, his calcium score was about 3,800. So in discussing with the patient, I noted that three months prior to the scan, he had actually had an invasive coronary angiogram and he was told he had no blockages, minor plaque disease, and a normal ejection fraction. Further discussions demonstrated that 30 years ago, he had daily chest radiation for a total of six months for therapy of Hodgkin's disease. If you look at what happens to the heart and the coronary arteries with external radiation, you see that it actually results in adventitial calcification, which to the traditional heart scan is very difficult to separate from the medial calcification seen in classic atherosclerotic plaque. So in this case, this patient has extensive calcification, which appears to not be associated with any significant disease as shown by a recent cardiac catheterization. This is his chest scan. So let's look at this a bit more carefully, beginning at the apex of the lung. As we move caudally, we begin to see effusions, not only involving the right area of the chest, but in particular in the left posterior thorax. So there's bilateral pleural effusions in this man with dyspnea and a normal catheterization. There is pericardial calcification also noted. And as we get towards the uh, base of the lung, you can see a very large pericardial effusion that apparently was not noted on a CT pulmonary angiogram done four months previously. Let's concentrate now not on the coronary arteries, but look at the heart as a whole. You can see some calcification of the pericardium. But as we move down, look at the anterior pericardial area. You can see that this is really significantly thickened. Moving towards the base of the heart, this pericardial thickening or so-called rind, pericardial rind, is very prominent and circumferential.
an estimation of the thickness of the pericardium puts it at about seven millimeters, which is a significant thickening of the pericardium. Moving down again towards the apex, we see again the significant pericardial rind. From the literature, there are a number of examples of pericardial calcification, pericardial disease, and constrictive pericarditis, as shown in these examples with thickened anterior pericardium, thickened rind around other areas of the pericardium, and a circumferential, relatively thin but circumferential pericardial thickening. In this example, there are also are bilateral pleural effusions, again consistent with constrictive pericarditis. Many times, such as this case with tuberculosis, these can be heavily calcified, but in particular, you don't necessarily see that in the presence of external mantle radiation. So in summary, 46-year-old man with progressive dyspnea for a number of months, most importantly, he had 30 years ago daily chest radiation for Hodgkin's disease. His screening heart scan showed extensive coronary artery calcification and thickening of the pericardium. The diagnosis, therefore, is constrictive pericarditis due to remote external radiation. This is an example, not from this patient, showing the dissociation of the classic pericardial thickening and constrictive pericarditis from the pulmonary vessels.